Hello viewers and welcome to another match of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. My name is Mitch and I am the Hive Tyrant. Today we have another game featuring one of our Death World Cycle Warlords. We're going to be proxying Vashelur. So our fourth upcoming Chaos Faction Slanesh Trait Warlord uh, that's going to be debuting in Pack 6 of the Death World Cycle in the Warp Unleashed, uh, it's going to be played by Sam Mann. And for today's game, Sam is going to be playing against Commander Shadow Sun, piloted by Brian Ruptash, one half of the First Planet podcast. Uh, looks like both of our players have decided to keep their opening hands. Initiative starts with our Chaos player. Planet number one is going to be Karnath, which allows you to trigger the battle ability of any planet in play. Two is going to be Elowith. Look at the top three cards of your deck. Three is Taurus, uh, which certainly favors Sam in that he's likely to have a low unit count owing to uh, the predilection here of Vashilur to put in really expensive demons. Uh, and then four is going to be stealing one resource. Five is going to be routing a target unit. Uh, Sam's first deploy action is laying down a copy of Promise of Glory to generate two cultist tokens. Vashilur is a 1-8 and whenever he happens to destroy an enemy army unit through the process of attacking, whether it's a conventional attack, or uh, he's the only warlord to have the printed area effect ability. Uh, either way, he does end up generating a cultist. So, at the opposite end of the table here at planet number five to potentially pull in a couple of resources during each and every command phase, we've got an Earth Cast Technician. Brian is in the process of looking at the top six cards of his deck. He finds a copy of Gun Drones. It's got the gun, or it's got the drone trait, so he's able to add that to his hand. Sam drops a copy of Coliseum Fighters, and this is rather regrettable, but it's going to be at planet number three here. Oh no, I'm sorry, so it's not regrettable at all. Sam's just a little quicker on the trigger than I am. He manages to bounce Promise of Glory back to his hand, and uh, then Sam is going to be able to play that again. Uh, we've had quite a bit of octagon difficulty with our players, so it looks like Sam is maybe being a little bit hasty here in uh, triggering the, these effects kind of rapid fire one after another, uh, but let's see how Brian is going to respond. So prior to Sam's second playing of the Promise of Glory, we are going to have an opportunity for Brian to do something, and and it looks like it's going to be a hell of a something indeed. It's the Sakea XV88 broadside being played at planet number one. So it's three command icons, first of all, uh, but it's a 4-6, and it gains area effect two as soon as it gains one or more attachments. And uh, since it is war gear eligible, uh, we could see Shadow Sun bounce over to that planet, drop a copy of Ion Rifle onto it to make it a 7-6 with area effect two, or Shadow Sun could also drop off a copy of Missile Pod. Uh, it is a pilot, and then as a deploy action, you can sacrifice this attachment to destroy uh, either a target support card or deal three points of damage to an enemy army unit. So this is one of our spoilers for Unforgiven, and it looks like Sam, thanks to the STC fragment, thanks to his double promise of glory, is going to be investing all of his remaining resources because he was able to shave off a total of six uh, off of this frenzied bloodthirster. So Sam has initiative, and I must confess, I don't think that Brian was anticipating this kind of beastie being dropped into play. Uh, Sam is, with the initiative token, likely going to be able to switch swing first, and uh, the instant that he can do that, unless Brian has got a three shield value card, that's going to be this broadside destroyed in a single swing, and that is going to be six resources straight down the drain. This is going to be an opportunity for uh, Brian to win command on this planet. Sam is currently not looking to be winning command anywhere, uh, but even these Coliseum fighters can kind of fight off Commander Shadow Sun's paltry 1-7 body alone. Um, and I suppose we'll just have to see where our players send their respective warlords. Uh, so if Sam goes to planet number one, he'll ensure that he's got initiative, and it looks like that is indeed going to be the case. He wants to make sure to not only just win command, uh, but also make sure that this is just going to be a devastating economic victory because he's going to be able to waste so many of his opponent's resources. So Sam is going to win a total of just one card and one resource, and uh, rather dissimilarly, I guess, 
Brian is just going to be gaining four resources, but that means we know for sure that he's not drawing into his command link drone his three shield value card, and that means this is going to be a very dead copy of the Sakea XV88 broadside. Sam is currently at a unit count of three. Brian is going to be at a unit count of two very shortly, so Sam's not going to be able to wild card trigger Taurus, uh, but Sam could route... Um, the tiny little Earthcast technician, or he could trigger Elowith uh, to make sure that he's able to look at the top three cards of his deck for any one card that he'd like, uh, or he could steal one resource from Brian, but then Brian's going to be gaining it back because he'll steal it from Sam. But combat starts. Frenzied Bloodthirster takes a swing and manages to kill that Sakea XV88 broadside, and it looks like Sam is going to be going for resource parity here. So he gains a resource, Brian loses a resource, and now we're about to see that same shift back. Uh, do bear in mind that this frenzied bloodthirster, whenever a combat round occurs in which one or more units have been destroyed, it gets armor bane, brutal, and flying. So fortunately for Brian, he doesn't have to deal with uh, something along the lines of Planum being an available planet yet, and Karnath is going to be out of the way early, but hopefully for his sake, Sam doesn't draw into uh, one of his copies of Corrupted Teleportarium or anything along those lines here. So, as we're about to move into our HQ phase, that's going to be two cards and four resources for each of our players. Brian at the top of the screen is going to have a total of eight resources at his disposal. Unfortunately, he did not draw into any cheap economy units. He's got gun drones, which uh, played conventionally are pretty vanilla. Two cost 2-2 two, two with command icon meets the vanilla test, uh, but then they don't have a an ability whatsoever, so that's... Uh, uh, just really regrettable here. We could see Missile Pod used to deal three points of damage directly to this Bloodthirster, uh, but you've got to attach it to a pilot or vehicle, and at the moment, uh, there are no such options here for Shadow Sun. Sam has now got a couple copies of Vicious Blood Letters, so no command, but Area Effect 3. He's also got a copy of Archon's Terror. He's got a rather protective copy of Backlash, which, it's not like Commander Shadow Sun has a lot of targeted effects which can single out elites, but then, if Sam wasn't already doing well enough, he's stumbled upon a copy of his one copy thereof, Signature Attachment. It is Predatory Instinct, so he could slap this onto his Warlord, and then that's going to be a warlord with area effect two. So here's something pretty interesting. Here at planet number two, we've now got a copy of that Sakea XV88 broadside. Sam picks up that copy of Predatory Instinct, presumably affixed to his warlord, but we'll have to see what exactly happens. Nice bit of a deploy stall, seeing as how it only costs two. Sam is going to be down to three resources. Brian is going to be down to two resources, but will he put out another army unit just to win command, or otherwise is he going to be using gun drones on? On his uh, broadside here. Uh, Brian's unit count is three, Sam's unit count is three, but if these Colosseum fighters die, then that's going to be disallowing Brian the opportunity to trigger the battle ability of Tara, uh, Taurus, and uh, I guess Sam is out of resources to use... Uh, to put out another army unit. So the broadside is going to pick up a copy of Ion Rifle. So it's now Area Effect 2, and it's going to be able to attack for 7. But Brian doesn't have a copy of Backlash at the moment to uh, oppose Sam's copy of Archon's Terror here. Sam at the moment just has a... Okay, sorry, I was clicking on the wrong player. So Sam's got a red and a blue icon. So if he were to win this planet, like planet number one doesn't really matter. But if Sam were to pick up two and four, that could be a victory. So it's looking like this is going to be a little bit longish of a game here. If Sam wanted, he could use his STC fragment to put out a copy of Vicious Blood Letter. But then he'll be at four units relative to Brian's three. And... Uh, I guess if he were to do that, if the broadside still manages to kill the Colosseum fighters, then Sam will be at three units versus three units, and that's going to be a draw there. Sam could drop a Vicious Blood Letters at, say, planet number one, and he'd be likely able to win that planet. Look at the top three cards of his deck for whatever he wants. It wouldn't be feeding into his victory condition, but it would just cost him three resources, so he's got a bit of a tricky decision to make there. Uh, where Sam would probably like to go might be... Like, I guess he could show up at 
two. He's not going to have initiative at that planet, and he could route the broadside, but if uh, Brian did have a copy of Backlash, it's only going to be a one-cost card, so Sam might be running the risk of his Warlord getting hit for seven, and that's kind of a dangerous prospect here, but it looks like Sam did decide to pass. Both of our players are deciding where exactly they want to send their Warlord. Shadow Sun may as well show up somewhere strictly to win command. Uh, I guess... Uh, where is... Sam gonna go. If Sam were to show up to, oh, I was gonna say planet number one, he'd just be stuck with his bloodthirster in his HQ again. Looks like Sam is gonna go for the routing targets. That's definitely not a bad choice there. Interestingly, we've got that copy of Missile Pod now being placed on the Sakea XV88 broadside, so as a deploy action, you can sack it, destroy a target uh, support, or deal three points of damage to an enemy unit in your enemy's HQ, so that could be this STC fragment being destroyed, but it's going to be uh, uh, replaced relatively quickly by Sam here. So, Brian, unfortunately, he did save uh, two resources by pl dropping that uh, attachment for free, courtesy of Shadow Sun onto his unit, but he's also kind of uh, doing a bit of redundant command struggle winning there, so Brian just got one card, one resource, he got a copy of Fire Drake Terminators, which does, I grant you, synergize well with Salum Enclave, so you could pay that for one, decrease the cost of that to three, and that might be a pretty damn decent play for the following turn. Looks like our first planet is about to disappear into the abyss. Sam got no more than a mere two resources during uh, uh, the command phase, so Elowith is going to be outright destroyed. This is going to be an opportunity for Vashilur to presumably kill this copy of Earthcast Technician, and that is going to be a cultist token added to Sam's HQ. We've got a battle about to occur here at Taurus. This is going to be three units killing this unit, and then that's going to be three versus two means... Uh, uh, Shadow Sun is going to be disallowed the opportunity to trigger that um, planet there. What's particularly interesting about this is Sam is going to have a chance to kill the Earthcast Technician. If Sam wants, he can either leave his frenzied bloodthirster at this planet... Or, because Vashilur is going to have to exhaust and then this unit dies, we'll have an opportunity for Sam to retreat with this unit, and if he does decide to do so, that would be added to his HQ, and then it could be returning to, say, our soon-to-be planet number one here, Taurus, and that will feed directly into Sam's possible victory condition through those red icons. Or, Sam could just sit here and block uh, his opponent from being able to win at uh, Farin. So let's exactly see what's going to happen. If Sam were to retreat with this unit, he could maybe end up winning this planet. Like, uh, I'm thinking if Sam leaves the Bloodthirster here or not, he's going to have a chance to route the broadside. If Sam manages to win this planet uncontested, because the broadside would be showing up exhausted, and generally Sam would possess initiative unless Shadow Sun arrives at that planet as well, that might be an opportunity for Sam to win this combat without too much trouble or making much of a stink about anything, and then he could use that copy of Archon's Terror to make his, uh, his life pretty easy for him. So Sam does manage to generate a cultist token because of the death of that Earthcast technician. Our screen is resized, as I just absolutely love, and we're about to go into an HQ phase here, so this will be four resources and two cards for each of our players. So, looks like it's going to be another big expensive elite uh, that Shadow Sun can barely afford to play, and then she's got the opportunity here of doing this... Um, uh, play where it's Salum Enclave and then the uh, Fire Drake Terminators. Sam wisely decides to use his STC fragment to decrease the cost of this elite by three prior to it potentially being destroyed by Missile Pod. Do note that Sam decided not to retreat his elite here and, uh, our new fifth planet is going to be Planum, which allows you to move a non-warlord, which could be really important for Sam to shift his frenzied bloodthirster around. Uh, but considering that is the fifth planet, 
he's not exactly going to be able to harass Shadow Sun by moving a unit to her planet uh, because it's downstream instead of up. Sam drops a copy of Splintered Path Acolyte to planet number five. Uh, he's now got two copies of Archon's Terror. Brian's got a copy of Selum Enclave to decrease the cost of non-Tau units by up to two, uh, but it comes at the cost of exhausting that, so... Brian's going to be down to five resources. We could see the Fire Drake Terminators for three. We've got this Heavy Marker Drone, which could be played on the Frenzied Bloodthirster, and then it's going to double all the damage dealt to it. Uh, instead, we see a copy of Ambush Platforms. So this is you can deploy an attachment from your hand, uh, and that means that you could Ambush Platform Gun Drones into play. So just something to bear in mind there. The Sakea XV-88 Broadside already has area effect too, but it could potentially have a uh, area effect um, four, and that's always cool. Here at planet number one, looks like Sam is leaving himself uh, open to uh, just no bullshit from his opponent at all. He's now got two copies of Vicious Bloodletter at planet number one, so two four fours for five apiece, and they've got uh, area effect three. So if uh, we see Shadow Sun show up at planet number one, she is going to take a large volume of damage indeed. And these uh, Fire Drake Terminators, unfortunately, when they're declared a defender, you deal damage to an attacker, not uh, when they're hit by an effect that is used while the uh, unit is considered to be attacking. Uh, so area effect does not turn on a uh, fire drake terminators no matter how hard you try the spark in the relationship is just dead missile pods is used it manages to successfully destroy the stc fragment sam has only got uh, three resources remaining i would imagine he'll save his resources and just not play the stc fragment now it's not like he's playing ammo depot or anything along those lines so it's uh you know no real need to keep your uh card count low and now yeah Sam has passed it's going to be Brian's opportunity to take a move here so Brian's got to be trying to think what exactly does he want to do uh, he's got a heavy marker drone which could make the frenzied bloodthirster here far easier to kill uh, but the trick is Sam has pretty much got this planet walled off, courtesy of these vicious bloodletters. I would not be surprised at all to see Sam send his warlord to planet number five just to move one of his vicious bloodletters from, soon to be his HQ, to this planet. So that's going to be a second red icon and a third red icon. Uh, Brian is still trying to decide where exactly he wants to put his fire drake terminators. It would be essentially pointless to put them out at planet number one because then they're going to guaranteed be destroyed he's going to drop them off somewhat equally ineffective uh ineffectually i fear at planet number two and this is just going to be a whole lot of nasty business sitting at uh planet number three here uh, we do have a Space Marines Allegiance for Shadow Sun. So the last time I checked, I believe Exterminatus is non-loyal. I think it would be extraordinarily unlikely for Brian to use it. Uh, but it would be a bit of, uh, you know, it'd just be a funny situation if, like, let's say this round Sam, yep, correctly goes to five. He's going to move his blood letter. Let's say next round he also goes to four and then he moves another blood letter here and then we were to see a copy of exterminatus or something would be ridiculous unfortunately it looks like shadow sun fell into that trap who did not see that coming a mile away i suppose the answer would have to be brian unfortunately uh but uh, this is going to be a very interesting choice. We're going to have this Sakea XV-88 broadside show up at this planet, but Archon's Terror is going to be able to remove it, and then Shadow Sun is going to be jettisoned from that planet. And uh, let's see here. This is going to be Command 1 on just one planet apiece for either of our players. It's going to be no more than a mere two resources for each of them. And uh, let's see. This is going to be unit count uh, 4 for Sam versus unit count 3 for our Tau player. And uh, so Sam is not going to be able to trigger Taurus, but he is regardless going to be benefiting from having a red material type icon in his uh, HQ here. So both of our players have by now managed to collect their respective resources. Sam's got two copies of Archon's Terror, and he's got a copy of Protective Backlash. Brian's hand is no different than it was. He's got a two-shield value card. Note that his Warlord can deal two points of damage to Shadow Sun's one, and Vashilur has eight HP versus, uh, 
uh, versus seven. Uh, so maybe Sam's going to be able to get a couple of points of chip damage on the broadside before uh, it is removed forcibly from that planet. Like, I think the absolute worst case scenario is going to be Oh, Sam, I feel like that's a little bit early. Why would you do that? So, okay, uh, Sam's got to be his own man. You know, he's my Tyrant cast co-host, but he's got to make his own decisions here. What I would have done is I'd have uh, attacked with area effect, hit that for two, hit Shadow Sun for two. I'd have taken a hit from Shadow Sun. We'd have readied up. Presumably, Brian would have stayed at that planet. I'd have used area effect again for a possible four points of damage on the Sakea XV88, and then I'd have used Archon's Terror at the very last possible moment. So a bit of a regrettable misplay, I can't help but say. Um... But that's fine. We see a copy of Heavy Marker Drone discarded as a shield card, and I just have to ask myself, what exactly is Brian hoping to accomplish by throwing that away? Like, granted, Shadow Sun is going to be able to drop it back onto an enemy army unit in the future, but man, I don't know. I guess it's just sitting there in the discard pile, and Shadow Sun's already got another attachment, which she could potentially recur, that copy of Missile Pod, which, I don't know, I guess... We'll just have to see what happens. I'm predicting, yep, Vicious Bloodletter relocated to planet number three, and uh, Brian decides to leave that planet. Brian says it's frustrating, but believe me, it's not nearly as frustrating as it would be if your broadside here had four points of damage on it. But uh, Sam still has another copy of a Pocket Archon's Terror in hand. So we go through another HQ phase. That's two cards and four resources for each player. Sam got another copy of Archon's Terror. Looks like, unfortunately, Sam... Uh, put his Archon's Terror at the bottom of his deck. People have got to be more mindful of this discard pile now that we're, you know, playing in a Necron containing card pool. And the only reason I'm giving either of these players a little bit of crap is because they're probably two of my closest friends and colleagues in our Conquest LCG community. So please, no need to write a comment about me disparaging either of these uh, two humble individuals, uh, because of course I definitely do appreciate their uh, willingness to tolerate these proxy matches, and uh, considering Sam's performance the first time he took Vashilur for a test drive, uh, Sam was very eager indeed to get back into the driver's seat, so... Let's see what exactly happens. Shadow Sun has got our initiative token. She's got a copy of Shadow Sun Stealth Cadre, which could be put on this copy of the broadside. It could be put on a copy of the Fire Drake Terminators, but Sam has got two Archon's Terrors. Last time I checked, it's going to be one and two. That's simple mathematics, ladies and gentlemen. Interestingly enough, this is going to be a copy of Sakea XV88 broadside here at planet number four. And I guess what we're going to be seeing is maybe Shadow Sun is going to go to this planet to trigger its battle ability to move the broadside to uh, this planet, which is the earliest possible victory condition for Sam. And sweet mother of mercy, we see another copy of Vicious Bloodletter, so I guess everything happens in threes in this match. Uh, some of the super superstitious people I used to work with uh, at the good old psychiatric hospital uh, used to always say something about threes. But, uh, <laughs> well, all right. So uh, where exactly are we going to be going? Sam decides to go to planet number two, and that is a pretty... Well, I guess pretty ineffectual move because, you know, what's he hoping to accomplish here? He's showing up. He's going to have an opportunity to route uh, the... Well, no, okay, never mind. I take it back. Shadow Sun moving to this planet is going to drop off a copy of Broadside, and now I have to wonder what exactly Brian was thinking just by depositing one of his uh, units to this uh, combat-irrelevant planet. I guess Brian's got a copy of Squadron Redeployment, so he can move both of these units to be present uh, for the battle at planet number two, but... Yeah, I mean, I guess that's got to be it, but if I were like Sam, what you could do... Uh, like, what really sucks is, let's say Sam... Okay, so first things first, let's do our command phase. So, Brian gets a total of one card and three resources. He got a Salum Enclave, totally just pointless. Sam got two resources. We're going to see a shift of one resource subtracted from Sam, one resource added to Brian. What I hope Sam does for his sake is that he routes this copy of Sakea XV-88 broadside that remains ready at this planet. That way, even though we could see one 
one of these two exhausted copies move to planet number two, we're not going to be able to see one of them via squadron redeployment exhausted to be moved to this planet. And that means that one of them is going to be showing up during the following round. Uh, Sam decides to not trigger this planet, and that's kind of a perplexing decision, but it's a bit unfortunate. There we see that squadron redeployment, and that means we're going to be seeing both copies of these units being shifted to this planet. That's going to be one, and then that is going to be a second copy in just a moment here. So of course, you know, I can backseat quarterback, whatever you want to call it, because I've got all the information at my hands. Uh, perhaps Sam didn't quite remember the explicit phrasing of a uh squadron redeployment i suppose for sam it's worth noting it is 11:35 p.m and uh not to make any excuses for suboptimal plays but regardless planum is now going to be moving the broadside to this planet and despite the presence of three vicious blood letters and two pocket archon terrors in hand uh, it's all going to be up to Brian to try to win this battle here. Uh, so we c did not see a copy of Missile Pods being put into play, uh, but we've got another HQ phase here, and I believe it's all going to come down to the uh, wire right now. So, God, this is... Uh Interesting. So Sam is going to be using his STC fragment, and I think he's going to be dropping out his copy of Black Legion Heldrake for six. But if he does that, he's only going to have enough for one copy of Archon's Terror, and we're presumably going to be seeing a heavy marker drone being placed on this unit. Uh, so the Archon's Terror is going to be able to remove this like 6 8 or this 7 6. Um, but. Yeah, God, that is so many elites. And what's interesting about this is, like, as soon as the combat round occurs in which one or more units have been destroyed, then it gets Armor Bane, Brutal, and Flying. And 8 Armor Bane is ridiculous, uh, let alone Brutal and Flying. Not that it's taken any damage, but we've got these vicious blood letters, and things are looking like it is just going to be an absurd amount of damage going out at this planet. But it looks like somebody's made Sam's decision for him in regard to what unit he's going to be using Archon's Terror against. Against. Uh, Brian did actually get a copy of Backlash, so very nice. For the first time on this channel, we're going to be able to be uh, seeing that played. Brian's actually got a couple of copies thereof, and uh, maybe Sam was afraid that his opponent did have a copy of uh, Backlash. Area Effect 4 against Sam is going to be able to threaten to kill these vicious bloodletters, but it's definitely of paramount importance to note uh, that Sam does have initiative so his warlord's going to be showing up at this planet. Are we going to be seeing both of these units with a... Uh area effect for it's looking like that may well be the case so that is absolutely fascinating uh looks like brian made a small mathematic mistake because he's of course got ambush platform in play all right so isn't he ballsy and it's looking like he is going to be doing all that he can to try to win at this planet because that is going to be area effect six all on this one sakea xv88 broadside looks like sam says a we six. If it were me, I'd just be, you know, feigning concern because I know I've got a couple of copies of Archon's Terror, which it's looking like there's no way Sam is going to be able to get enough resources to use both. Uh, but Brian's got a couple of copies of Backlash, and of course, he's got more than enough resources with which to play those. So what exactly are we going to be seeing here? Do note that if Frenzied Bloodthirster gets hit with Area Effect 6, then it is going to hit like an absolute truck. AE6 can kill off all of these vicious blood letters because Sam has gotten rid of his one three shield value card, but Sam is going to be able to use uh, at least one of these to attack first. And then the, uh, like, let's say one of these attacks for area effect three, it's going to hit all of these units. Um, because I assume Shadow Sun's going to be showing up at that planet. And I guess if it's uh, Shadow Sun arriving there, you may as well put the Heavy Marker Drone on uh, the Frenzied Bloodthirster here. So Brian indicates that he somehow screwed up. I suppose we'll have to see what exactly is going to be happening. Uh, Brian's got to be digging through his discard pile for that copy of Heavy 
marker drones because what exactly is Sam going to be doing? So I guess first off, command struggles. It's going to be two resources, one for Brian. No player is going to be winning anything else. Uh, this is going to be Shadow Sun. Do it. Heavy marker drone on the frenzied bloodthirster because then we'd see area effect six. Kill these three units. It would be 12 points of damage to the frenzied bloodthirster, which would also die. Vashialur would almost be bloodied, and the Black Legion Heldrake would almost be bloodied. All of these units would be taking a whole hell of a lot of damage, but it looks like Sam may well end up losing this match uh, right near the end here. So Brian at present only has a green strong point icon, but if he's going to be able to prevent Sam from winning at this planet, if he's going to be able to block Sam off from winning at planet number two as well, uh, he may end up uh, being able to win through uh, just winning uh, at planet number seven here. So absolutely fascinating match let's see where this heavy marker drone ends up it's probably not going to make too terribly much of a big difference whether it goes on to the black legion Heldrake or the frenzied bloodthirster and now sam has got to be hoping and praying that his opponent does not have a copy of backlash in hand but unfortunately that uh is not going to be the case because we are very much going to be seeing backlash used here so uh i wonder how things would have maybe been well i guess things wouldn't have been different if we'd have seen the planum no, never mind. If we'd have seen Sam do his routing thing, one of these units would have been exhausted, but it's only going to be taking one, and uh, Shadow Sun could have piled all these gun drones onto the... Um onto the, the broadside that would not have been showing up exhausted. So, Sam throws out Archon's Terror, and for the first time on this channel, let's go ahead and see it. This is going to be Backlash, dashing Sam's hopes and dreams. Sam pisses away two resources, throws away a card, because that is going to be Backlash right there, and now Sam's odds of winning are going to be very slight indeed. Looks like it's going to be, uh, well, he's going to have a chance to swing with his Bloodthirsters here. Well, actually, you know, let me actually think like a rational human being for a moment. Uh, Sam is going to be able to swing for eight. Uh, so this is uh, currently eight resources and lucky, lucky player. We have got... Um, I guess we have exactly 8 HP for our broadside, and Brian holds a 1 value shield card, so I was assuming we'd just see the Vicious Bloodletter mop up. Well, not mop up, but just distribute quite a lot of damage. But isn't that a bit of a shame? That is 7 points of damage dealt to the 8 HP broadside, and now we're going to be seeing that devastating area effect 6, kill uh 25 resources worth of units and that about sucks for sam so goodbye all three vicious blood letters goodbye frenzied bloodthirster the black legion heldrake is almost destroyed and sam's warlord is almost going to be bloodied here we've all pre-agreed that if vashia lure ends up being bloodied it's going to be no more than a mere uh, one six on its bloodied side. Now that heavy marker drones is going to be gone, and it looks like this game is all but unwinnable now for Sam. Like, good lord, uh, Sam sitting at no resources and two cards. Uh, we've got a one shield value card tossed out for the Black Legion Heldrake, so it's going to be sitting at uh five points of damage this is going to be an opportunity for sam to attack for eight and he is going to be able to kill the uh Sakea xv88 broadside here so sam can do quite a bit of damage maybe he's not totally out of this one yet uh but we will definitely have to see so the black legion heldrake does manage to kill uh the broadside here that is currently a seven six there are not enough shield cards in our tau player's hand for him to prevent that effect so that unit's going to be destroyed. Shadow Sun's going to be able to attack for a mere one. Sam's going to have to use his copy of Archon's Terror to prevent his Warlord from being bloodied, but uh, presuming that Sam does that, that's going to be Sam's opportunity to uh, use his Warlord to do Area Effect 2. That's going to kill the uh, Broadside, and uh, it's going to wound Shadow Sun, and then I suppose we'll have to see what exactly is going to be happening here. So the Broadside is going to be dying. The Fire Drake Terminators are going to be wounded. If the Black Legion Heldrake stays, then it's going to be the initiative sticking with Sam. He's going to be able to attack and either kill the... Um 
Wow. I guess what the worst case scenario for Brian is, I guess maybe Sam is going to end up winning the game after all. So let me run through our hypothetical scenario here. Both players are pretty much going to be forced to stay with both of their units. Sam's Helldrake could attack and uh, kill the Fire Drake Terminators in one swing, and then they're going to be sitting at two hit points. So I must apologize for my terrible combat math my dear uh, lady and gentlemen viewers, but it's looking like this is going to be Sam's game. Sam is going to be staying at this planet, I hope, because for his sake, the Helldrake eliminates the Terminators. Yep, he indicates that he's staying. That's going to be two points of HP remaining, uh, two points of hit remaining on the Helldrake. Shadow Sun can only hit it for a mere one, and then uh, the Helldrake is going to be able to live long enough to absolutely ruin Commander Shadow Sun's so Shadow Sun, it looked like you were going to be able to save this one, uh, but in the end, it looks like that is not going to be the case. That is going to be Vashi Allure being bloodied. Kugoth Plaguefather was indeed the warlord that we were proxying here, uh, so Vashi Allure is going to be removed from that planet. And that is going to bring us back to the uh, bottom of a new combat round. And the Hell Drake is going to have an opportunity to swing. That is going to be a bloodied Commander Shadow Sun sent, removed from that planet. And uh, that right there is going to be the GG. So Brian accepts his loss. He decides to retreat from the planet. And that is going to be a big congratulations to War Master Sam Mans. So that ended up being a ridiculous game at the very end. 25 resources worth of units all removed from... Uh, an area effect six blast with the assistance of myriad attachments and a heavy marker drone this game was not without uh, many, many technical difficulties, many scrapped starts and restarts and octagon disconnects and all sorts of frustrating business, but my dear viewers, I'm glad that uh, all three of us managed to stick it out, and in the end, Brian and Sam and I ended up delivering a pretty entertaining match, if I don't say so myself. So, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'm, I'm definitely pleased with how it turned out. Sam saved a little bit of face coming back from his humiliating Vashilur loss. Uh, to the Swarm Lord played by Eric Kielbach, and he did manage to beat uh, the First Planet podcast. So it looks as though the Tyrant cast is, in the end, the superior piece of content. But this was, of course, all in good fun, and we got to try out some new proxy cards from Unforgiven as well. So, my dear viewers, as always, if you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already, or if you are already subscribed, subscribed, you're always encouraged to share this content, because the more people end up seeing games like this one, the more people may give Conquest a try, enjoy it, join our community, and of course, that's all the more reason for Fantasy Flight Games to continue to develop this fantastic product. If at any point you'd like to get in touch with me, reach out on Facebook, I'm also on Twitter, and if you ever feel any inclination whatsoever, I would be deeply honored, flattered, and humbled, and just hugely appreciative were you to kick me as little as a dollar a month through my Patreon, as contributions like yours may well help keep this channel alive. So, as always, thank you so much for watching, and once again, be sure to check back in again soon for much more Conquest LCG content to come.